Review of the Nerf Mega Thunderbow. Included is the blaster, which is reluctant to fit in my entire frame. 10 mega darts, which is new because usually it's only enough to load and fire the blaster once. This is actually double, which is neat. And the instructions. Note, five of the mega darts have this print on them, and then five in the rear do not, so it was probably just for the marketing to see through the box. This is a new bow-style blaster in the mega line. The mega darts here in the red one um, are much bigger than the elite darts. If you're unfamiliar with these, they are pretty cool, and they are massive. So going over the blaster, I'll go over the external stuff, show you how it works, show you it firing, and then give you my opinion. Starting with the front, it is a front-loading spring blaster. It has five barrels, you load them like this. It fires the darts one at a time, there's no way to shotgun that, and it has a smart air restrictor firing from top to bottom. However, if you load only the third one, because it has a smart air restrictor, it will not dry fire the first one, it will fire the only barrel with the dart in it. I am seeing noticeable increases in power and velocity and range from the top, and then it tapers down as you go to the bottom. I assume, I have not opened it, so this is all speculation, but that the air source is at the top and it just gets less air efficient as it gets to the bottom. This leads to slightly lower ranges as you get to the bottom barrels, but the first two are incredibly powerful. Moving back, the great things are the bow arms. They do look pretty similar. I, I know I can't fit them in the frame, but I don't want to scoot all the way back there, then you can't see the details in the shell. But the bow arms themselves are very sturdy, very hard uh, plastic, although they don't really have to be too strong. This is a bow type blaster, but it's not bow powered. These are not propelling the dart. However, they are essential for the priming of the blaster. This string is also a proper string. It's not an elastic cord like some of the other uh, Nerf blasters, and that's because it's essential for the operation. So to prime this blaster, you pull back on the string, it compresses the bow arms, and as you can see with the priming indicator here, when you pull it back, it's now primed. You have to hold it back unless you want to fire it. There is an internal catch, however. This is not like many other uh, pull and release bows of the past. So you can very slowly release the uh, string, and then that sound you heard is the catch disengaging and the plunger tube advancing. Sorry, the plunger rod advancing, but it shoots. This internal catch mech is pretty cool because you prime it similar to a bow, but then it fires like a gun. This means you can uh, have proper form and all of that, have an awesome release, and it'll fire the exact same way as if, if you're upside down going like this. That dart is gonna travel the same velocity because of its internal mech, which is great for consistency because you don't have to know how to fire a bow, you don't have to get a clean release. All you're doing is releasing an internal catch just like a normal Nerf blaster. Getting to the grip, it is definitely an oversized grip. This thing is massive, but it's very comfortable for a huge hand. There is no trigger or trigger guard, so your hand can sit wherever you want because um, you don't have to manipulate anything down here. On the shell, there's actually nothing going on. Uh, there's no in-strike rails, no accessories, nothing to um, manipulate. The only thing that uh, is sort of interesting is the priming indicator, which is an interesting addition. To have a priming indicator when you, know, you have external arms that are pointed all the way back seems a little funny to me. So now that you know how it works, I'll show you it firing. Seven, seventy-four, seventy, seventy-one feet per second. So as you can see, the performance is phenomenal. This thing shoots crazy far and crazy hard. It's actually outperforming all of the other Elite Blasters I've fired, at least with regular blue Elite Darts. However, the first two shots are much harder than the bottom three. It gets a little bit less air efficient as you go down, and it's just not shooting at the same performance. So the consistency from barrel to barrel is not really great. However, that's better than Hasbro nerfing the first two barrels in order to match the bottom three. I am glad that those are efficient barrels that are shooting hard, because they should. They're closer to the air source. So as far as performance and accuracy and all of that goes, it far exceeds my expectations of a mega gun. However, because it's a bow, you have to have a dedicated hand to, in order to prime and disengage the catch, which means you only have one hand to stabilize this very large blaster. This leads to a shaky hand, and it's very difficult to actually aim, just like with any bows. And then when you get tempted to go really fast, it's very hard to stay on target compared to something like a normal blaster where it's in your shoulder, you only have to use one finger to disengage the catch, and you have your whole body on the, uh, on the blaster in order to maintain accuracy. So accuracy suffers, that, but that should be apparent because you are using the bow. The rate of fire is phenomenal. I could fire this much faster than a Magnus or a Centurion. It is very large too. I might be throwing off your proportions because I'm a big dude. I'm a little over 6'3". So if you're a child, this is going to be pretty big and very difficult to walk around if you're playing inside of a house or somewhere where you're confined. But my overall opinion of the blaster is pretty high for its class. I don't think I'd ever use a bow just because it's sort of silly. But to be able to modify this to shoot like a blaster would be phenomenal because the performance is wonderful. I'm very happy with it. 
and I tried to abuse it and run it really hard and I couldn't actually get it to jam or to jam off these silly bow arms. So I'm actually surprised and pleasantly surprised with the performance and the mechanical abilities of the blaster. So overall the blaster is a pretty nice blaster, however considering the price, it's 40 US dollars for this, I find it hard to justify that cost when the Magnus is similar in performance and like 15 or no more than 20 US dollars. So the price point is a little off in my opinion, but a lot of the Hasbro products right now are ramping up. It might be inflation or it might be them knowing they have a monopoly on the market. Well, pretty much because Busby doesn't count, they're terrible. But I'm still a little disappointed with the price point. I think $34.99, maybe $29.99 would be a bit more fair for it, considering what it does. It's just a five shooter. But that's just my opinion on the price point. Overall, the blaster performs well, so definitely no complaints there. If you're interested in a bow type blaster or the mega darts, um, make up your own mind on those because they are kind of weird. Um, I would recommend this if you're interested in it. That's the review on the Thunderbow. If you'd like to see pictures or my written re review, I have a page on my website. Otherwise, that's the end of the review. Thanks for watching. The fit of the missile on the barrel is very tight, so it's definitely not going to come off. Keep in mind, this missile launcher is not detachable. It's permanently integrated into this shell. In-strike stock attachment point, this is included in...